Hello guys, this Science of Sport video is for uh, BTEC Sport and Exercise Sciences, Unit 2 Functional Anatomy, and it's the fourth part or the fourth video, which is information regarding learning aim B1, the location, anatomy and function of the components of the cardiovascular system. So this video focuses on the lymphatic system, which is possibly a system that you may not be quite as familiar um, with. And the reason why it's incorporated into the cardiovascular section is because it very much works hand in hand with the cardiovascular system. So all really that's on your specification is it says that you need to have a bit of an understanding about the function and the anatomy of the lymphatic system. So firstly, let's just have a quick look at it. So the blue and the red um, vessels that are illustrated on this left hand diagram you are again probably familiar with because that represents the arteries and the veins of your cardiovascular system. On the right is the lymphatic system. So the first thing to note is pretty much like the cardiovascular system there are vessels, lymphatic vessels, which are spread all over your body, a bit like our arteries and veins are spread all over our uh, body. The other thing this diagram tries to show, and I can show you again in other diagrams, is that whilst the cardiovascular system is a sort of a, um, an ongoing cycle or an open loop, as in blood goes out and it comes back in, in this loop fashion, the lymphatic system is not sort of a, hasn't got that two directions. It's just got from capillaries one way back to the heart, a bit like the veins really. So it's only half of the root, if you like. So it hasn't got the outward bit from the heart, it's got the back to the heart, a bit like the veins do. So this green, uh, or this the green parts on this diagram represent the lymphatic vessels carrying lymph, which is the content of these vessels, one way back to the heart. And that will make more sense when we look at what its job is. So I'm just going to show you a very short video clip to help try and uh, visualise the lymphatic system. In a nutshell, the lymphatic system is a drainage system that removes excess fluid from body tissues and returns it to the bloodstream. It's actually a subsystem of both the circulatory and immune system. The major purpose of the circulatory system is to bring oxygen and nutrients to body tissues and remove wastes. This exchange happens in the smallest blood vessels called the capillaries. Blood plasma containing nutrients moves out of capillaries at the arterial end of capillary beds, while tissue fluid containing wastes reabsorbs back in at the venous end. However, not all of the fluid is drawn back to the bloodstream at this point. About 15% of it is left in the tissues and would cause swelling if accumulated. This is where the lymphatic system comes into play. It picks up the excess fluid and returns it to the circulatory system. Unlike the blood circulatory system, which is a closed loop, the lymphatic system is a one direction open-ended network of vessels. Lymphatic vessels begin as lymphatic capillaries made of overlapping endothelial cells. The overlapping flaps function as a one-way valve. When fluid accumulates in the tissue, interstitial pressure increases, pushing the flaps inward, opening the gaps between cells, allowing fluid to flow in. As pressure inside the capillary increases, the endothelial cells are pressed outward, closing the gaps, thus preventing backflow. Unlike blood capillaries, the gaps in lymphatic capillaries are so large that they allow bacteria, immune cells such as macrophages, and other large particles to enter. This makes the lymphatic system a useful way for large particles to reach the bloodstream. It is used, for example, for dietary fat absorption in the intestine. Once inside lymphatic vessels, the recovered fluid is called lymph. Lymph flow is enabled by the same forces that facilitate blood flow in the veins. It goes from lymphatic capillaries 
to larger and larger lymphatic vessels and eventually drains into the bloodstream via the subclavian veins. On the way, it passes through a number of lymph nodes, which serve as filters, cleansing the fluid before it reaches the bloodstream. Lymph nodes are small bean-shaped structures scattered throughout the lymphatic network. They are most prominent in the areas where the vessels converge. Lymph nodes contain macrophages and dendritic cells that directly swallow up any pathogens, such as bacteria or viruses that may have been taken up from an infected tissue. They also contain lymphocytes, T cells and B cells, which are involved in adaptive immune response, a process that produces activated lymphocytes and antibodies specific to the invading pathogen. These are then carried by the lymph to the bloodstream to be distributed wherever they are needed. The lymphatic system also includes lymphoid organs. Primary lymphoid organs, the thymus and bone marrow, are the sites of lymphocyte production, maturation, and selection. Selection is the process in which lymphocytes learn to distinguish between self and non-self so they can recognize and destroy pathogens without attacking the body's own cells. Mature lymphocytes then leave the primary for the secondary lymphoid organs, the lymph nodes, spleen, and lymphoid nodules, where they encounter pathogens and become activated. So that video gives a slightly more visual way um, and tells the story of the lymphatic system and the components of it. And what I'll do through now uh, what I'll do now is go through each of the components with a very brief sort of summary of their function. So we've got the overall function of this system. So this system, as it as we know, works very much hand in hand with the cardiovascular system and also the immune system. So this is a central way in which our body protects ourselves from infections and from bacteria and from toxins. And it connects with the cardiovascular system as a as a method of removing and transporting stuff. So um, the cardiovascular system delivers oxygen and removes CO2 as waste product. The plasma we know is this water watery medium of blood and some of that plasma is squeezed and pushed out of our capillaries into our tissues and it's called tissue fluid there. Much of that fluid will come back into the veins and be taken away in the veins, but about 15% of it does not. And, th and that extra or excess fluid, tissue fluid, will enter the lymph capillaries. So basically we've got little capillaries that are green on this diagram that take in extra fluid and transport it away. When that fluid is inside the lymph capillaries, it's called lymph rather than plasma, rather than tissue fluid. So when it's in the lymph capillaries or the lymph vessels, it's called lymph. And it's a very watery, clear fluid. And as we already know, it transports, it moves, it takes this extra, this excess tissue fluid away and dumps it back up here, back in the veins in the vena cava, where it will then carry on its normal journey in the cardiovascular system. So three functions of the lymphatic system. Firstly, to help transport excess tissue fluid called lymph and other waste products away from our capillary system. So the green network of vessels transports excess fluid away and the fluid is called lymph in those vessels. It's a drainage system to support the immune system. So we know this is part of the immune system. And in that role of, our, of protecting us as our immune system does, um, there are white blood cells in the lymph nodes that help attack uh, bacteria and toxins. And we, we drain and take away toxins as well. So it's very much a transport system and a protective immune related system. So the components that make up the lymphatic system, first of all, lymph. Lymph is the tissue, the fluid part, um, and it's carried in lymph vessels. 
um, we have about three litres of a day circulated and produced. So remember, it, the extra fluid is squeezed out of our capillaries from our normal cardiovascular system, and that excess fluid drains into our lymphatic capillaries and is taken away. This lymph, this fluid, contains really important white blood cells which help protect us from infection, and that part of it is part of our immune system. Lymph is transported then up the lymphatic vessels and will be passed through lymph, lymph nodes. And lymph nodes are very central in cleaning them out, clearing them out, dealing with any problematic bacteria or components. And ultimately, this lymph gets returned to our vena cava. So going back to this diagram, this would lymph moves out of the vessels, it's cleaned in the lymph nodes and it's taken to the vena cava. So that is the overall sort of description of what lymph is. Then, of course, the lymph vessels themselves. We've got this one-way network. It's important you recognise it's a one-way network. It's an open network. It doesn't have a closed circuit that's ongoing like our cardiovascular system. It's a one-way open network. Um, these vessels do have one-way valves because often as with veins, often this direction of lymph is having to travel up against gravity. And, uh, and similar to veins, movement of lymph upwards back to the vena cava, back to the heart, depends on the skeletal muscle pump squeezing those lymph vessels, pushing the lymph back up. If you sit on a plane and you don't move for hours and hours, your ankles swell. That's because the excess fluid that's drained out of your blood vessels is basically sitting around your ankles. Your ankles get all puffy. It's because that excess tissue fluid hasn't been sent up back via these lymph vessels back up to the heart and, and moved away. So it's really important that we move, that we use our muscles to keep the, their sort of squeezing, massaging, massaging action and help push the lymph up against gravity through these one-way valves and get it back up to the vena cava. And then, of course, the nodes. So the lymph nodes, we've got various lymph nodes that um, filter, clean, attack any infections. So they are there. They're very much in incorporating our white blood cells. They are there, our defensive cells. They are the, the important part of our immune system that attacks infections and bacteria and toxins. Um, you know, sometimes when you have an infection or when you, you your glands go up, you know, and these are the key places where there might be swelling. That really is what you need to know about the lymphatic system. So you need to kind of get a picture in your head what it looks like compared to the cardiovascular system. It's this one way direction from our capillaries to our vena cava. Um, understand its overall function and understand the bits that make up the lymphatic system, the, the components, the lymph itself, the vessels and the nodes. The question that we've had on this was for four marks, describe the function of the lymphatic system. An actual fact, this was the mark scheme. This is a brilliant place to start for being really clear with what you should be able to know and the facts that you should be able to relay about the system. It transports lymph, it's clear watery fluid, it's got vessels and, and lymph nodes. It's a drainage system. It collects the extra fluid from our body tissues. It connects with the immune system because it, it, it provides antibodies. It fights infection. White blood cells do that for us. and We get rid of any waste products and pathogens and toxins. So that is a brilliant way to learn, I think, more or less what you need to know about the lymphatic system.